All right, so before we start, I, I, I notice, I know you're very upset. Yes. I know you're very upset. I, I, I read all the comments you, you wrote to me, and uh, you're very upset yes. about the situation. So yes. stay calm. We, you know, we'll talk yeah. it over. And, uh, all right. So what's going on? The Let's start off with the mass exodus in Sydney, Australia. What the heck is going okay. on with that? All right, so I'll just start from the really beginning. So the first time I saw your video was the one about Sydney being a asshole, which mm -hmm. is a poop hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I just feel ever since 2010, I felt really lonely in the city. And as time went by, I just felt the infrastructure is crumbling. Everything's decaying. Public transport is crumbling. The train service is crumbling. Everything is just falling apart. Things are getting more expensive. A cup of coffee is like... Small cup is like four Australian, which is like three US or like two fifty US for like a tiny cup. Yeah, I heard cigarettes yeah, are fifty it, bucks a pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's gonna be like sixty bucks in like those city convenience stores, like those tourist hotspots. It's like sixty bucks Australian, which is like forty US for like a pack of twenty. Dude, you know cigarettes? how much land I could buy in Florida with forty bucks US? Yeah, I know. It's it's so crazy, and then. I was just on the internet and then I searched up Sydney is a poop hole and then I found your video on YouTube and then before that I saw like a lot of comments of people just getting fed up of Sydney and they're all locals you know people like they live here they're born here um for me it's been really hard because ever since high school a lot of my friends they just left the city they well they studied in Sydney like uh, UNSW Uni of New South Wales and Sydney University and UTS these are just university inside Sydney but once they finished studied and once they finished the internship program in Sydney they just completely relocated let's say to Melbourne or to like a regional area or like to a tier two tier three tier four because it's more affordable and you right. actually own the land as opposed to paying um, strata fee, which yeah, but you you're going 100, a, 200 a miles dollar, out of the right? CBD. Oh yeah, they, I I'm still stuck in the city. <laughs> I'm stuck because I I'm well. It's a long story. My life isn't like that great because I have. There's a lot of people in Sydney who are actually stuck. They can't get out. They're trying to prepare to get out. I'm still sort of preparing. I know I sort of left late. So, um, I guess you finished your studies. If you don't mind, mind me asking, are, are you in your earlier thirties or early twenties? Um, I'm actually Gen Z, Generation Z. What? Uh, yeah, I forgot what that meant. That's uh, like 1996. Oh, 96. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Wow. Yeah, you, and. Um, so you can't are, – are you employed right now with this – this this? Yes, the, how's I'm the lockdown thing the going problem, on there? The problem was um I was unemployed for like three months and then that crunched like a lot of my money. And the, are you home? Are you on lockdown? Uh, I'm not on lockdown because I'm in Sydney. Okay. But I just mostly stay at home because if you go outside to a restaurant, they have to record your name. And if there's an outbreak, the police will investigate that entire place and then force you to have a 14-day quarantine so i'm not gonna do that if let's say i need to eat out which i barely do i'm just gonna get takeaway i'm not gonna get 14 days locked in home it's ridiculous wow. it's draconian wow yeah. okay um <laughs> lord humongous says i'm a zoomer <laughs> i'm just looking at the comment section <laughs> Nice, nice. Gen, Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, you've messaged me quite a bit, and it's 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 very upsetting yeah. to, to the transitioning yeah, the reason, from. Yeah, you, the you reason I couldn't get on air because I have to work, a, like most of the time, especially on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. I work in the afternoon, so I couldn't make it. I know the show is like twelve o'clock my time, but I have to be there at work at two o'clock at my place, so I couldn't make it on the Thursday. Um, but, yeah. someone saying Mike Martin's and hitting stacks, a suburb and a uh, suburb 18 miles away from, uh, Sydney CBD has properties selling for close to 3 million Australian dollars. And you know what? I could find the same property, same square footage and more land yep. in somewhere yep. in, in, in somewhere in a good part of the Dakota. United States yes. for 230 yes, grand. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I like about the United States is I had an American friend. He was like from Pennsylvania like in high school and then we we're like talking he was like two years younger than me so he's a generation z as well 
and he said like because Canada, I mean not Canada, uh, America, because they can hold dual citizens. So he holds the U.S. and Australia, and he said he's getting rid of the Australia. I said why, dude? And he's like, because he, he likes IT, he's gonna get into that industry. And he said he's just abandoning Australia. I said why? He said like he just can't put up with this crap, like three bed for one point five million Australian, which is like one point one U.S. And in Pennsylvania, he can pick something the same size, the same like acreage or land size for like 150k US, yep, which is around 230k Australian dollars or 210k Canadian dollars. You see, a lot of people message me from Australia saying, "Oh my God, your videos my comparing Florida real estate to Sydney is yeah, crazy." Yeah, it's ridiculous because of the propping up, and this this crap has been happening for like more than more than 10 years it's it's not like oh it's 2015 it's suddenly spiked oh there's a boom this uh, oh mining boom it's not that they've been propping up this thing for like more than 20 years and now it's just coming to an end i hope it just goes downhill because if they want to keep it uphill they're just gonna have to go money printer go burr you know it's just gonna be money printer go burr money printer go burr and you know what that will happen they will just completely raise food prices since COVID, food prices has gone up by 10% in um, Sydney. Right. And um, last year, in 2019, 2018 to 19, so that was like before COVID, like when I first saw like your channel, the food prices went up by 6%, mm -hmm. like compounded. Mm -hmm. so, so this is not like 10% from like 1980. I'm talking about- No, compounded. no. This is in this the is last compounded. quarter. So there's a saying, like, I think there's a quote from Einstein or someone saying like, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world so you have your seven wonders like all these beautiful places you have the eighth wonder eighth wonder is compounding mm -hmm. those who understand it will earn it from That's passive correct. income or those who don't understand it will have to pay for it and i completely understand and the whole system is a lie they they teach zoomers and millennials like study hard get a job this that and then you, you're gonna like pay off your bills pay off your debt you're gonna have like a happy life but then ever since I saw videos on Robert Kiyosaki, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, I think I know that guy. I've seen him around on, yeah, on my, and yeah. Then, and then, yeah, and then when I watched him, I realized there's like so much stuff that I, you don't learn. Because I did economics and commerce at high school level, but they never mentioned you anything. Dude, so the they don't even teach you how to manage your uh, credit yeah, debt and uh, explain yeah. to you how dangerous student loans are. The first thing yeah. they do oh, yeah, when you reach grade dangerous. 10, 11, they come in and what university are you going to and which yeah. student loans are going to be beneficial yeah. for you? Yeah, the thing is um, a lot of millennials and Gen Z, they're sort of like delaying the payment to their student loans. So basically they're going to um, – they're not going to pay. They're just going to get up to that threshold. So if you earn – I think below 45k Australian, you don't have to like really pay much on the debt. But if you earn more, you have to pay off the debt, and and obviously over like a 10 year period. But when you stretch it out, it's like a 30k loan, which is ending up to be like 60k or 50k for like his whole lifetime. If they're extending it, even if the interest is low, the the cake that you pay is like heaps because it's all compounded. It's not build up on the previous value is all compounded it's compounded that's that's, that's what yeah, that's i call on the channel vig understand. yeah exactly and i paid off my student loans and now i don't have much savings but i got rid of debt the thing is is you have to get rid of debt that's a key i mean like if there's people in your show who's like a gen z or millennial just pay off your student loan like even if the government says don't pay for it because they sooner or later they're gonna grab money off you through negative interest rate or force you to pay because the government is pretty broke especially australia the debt has been i think it's about more than 200 300 billion dollars in debt and that's compounding when mm -hmm. i was in high school back in five six years ago it used to be like 50 60 billion dollar debt and i was like more than like five six times and it's not getting better no and this is all pre-covid this is all pre-covid it's so pre-covid yeah, well, everything was, like pre everything was falling apart pre-COVID. Everything was falling apart. We were, uh, we had the Raven on the show. We had a couple other guests on the show. They were already predicting, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, housing, uh, not housing. Sorry, um, food shortages. This, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, is, yeah. yeah, and then now you have like all these random channels like post-dicting, like saying like it's all happening. No, no, no. We've been talking it for like years. We've been warning people for like, like the 2008 GFC, mm -hmm. like before then, mm -hmm. you know? 
Yeah, I, I my first Australia, my first Australia video I did six, no, seven years ago, where uh, wages weren't. I read an article uh, somewhere that wages weren't keeping up to the cost of housing, and this was like seven, eight years ago. Not, I read this. Yeah, article. it's then, it's then I read it on my channel, and my channel got flagged for me reading that article written by somebody else. Yeah, Mike, you're an honest guy. I know that because I, I watched like during. March when I was like unemployed when the um COVID was like really really bad in Australia when the toilet paper all got smashed oh. you had like 400 something videos on your um housing crisis so I basically watched every video that's on Australia Whoa. so the ones that are on like Can Canada or New Zealand I didn't touch I just watched the one on Australia mm -hmm. and I as I watched I noticed something strange like your 400 vids turned into 397 so they're actually removing your vids. They are. I know this because I've been tracking it. I, I watched those videos. And they are taking them down. They are slowly yeah, taking, taking down them the down. videos. Um, yeah. They just have a bit – like there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that can make this. One, YouTube wants to award some sort of a channel for being consistent in this and this and that. So they want to remove it from me and give it to someone else. That's one thing. I don't think that's the case though. Another one is they want to give like uh, uh, – like, um, Creators like would that have a lot of videos or record like some sort of like a, a like a golden globe for an independent creator, not yeah. a news podcast like like a big news media that puts out a video yeah. every three minutes, like independent right. videos made by. I would yeah. probably win that one hands down because I had over forty five hundred videos. Now I'm down to forty three, but so yeah. they can't really do anything with my channel there. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, they can't really do anything. So. But it's a problem for them. We're like, ah, where do we get rid of this guy? Yeah. What do we do? We don't like this guy. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I want to jump into Martin North really quickly. His yep. channel is called Walk the World, right? I had Walk him on last world. week, two weeks ago. So his channel is called Walk the World. I, I just want everyone who's in the chat, who's from like Australia, whether you're in Queensland or in Sydney or wherever it might be, just go on the YouTube and type in Robert Kiyosaki, Martin North, mm -hmm. and then you'll see two videos. One is from four months ago called Recession, Depression, The Winners and Losers with Robert Kiyosaki. That's the video title, mm -hmm. 17 minutes. And the next video is from a month ago, and it's called Watch for the Signs with Robert Kiyosaki. And then he's not a he's not a post dictator. He's a predictor. Mm -hmm. He said, 2008, January, the Lehman Brothers went down. <laughs> like, he predicted that in January 2008 and then on CNN and the CNN guy thought he was just like a crazy conspiracy mm -hmm. and then in September Lehman Brothers in 2008 was gone was just completely obliterated wiped, wiped. Just, yeah crumbled into dust literally crumbled into dust and then like these two videos I, I just urge everyone from Australia just Martin watch North, guys videos. we Robert... had Martin North three weeks I asked him a, a couple of hard hitting questions I asked Martin North there's yeah. a question this is the yeah, question yeah watch that as well yeah I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask this question. I'm gonna have Randy Patrick on um, next trends in the housing market from Florida. Yeah. Then I'm gonna have uh, uh, one guy from Australia in the week after. I'm gonna ask that guy yeah. from Australia. He's been making housing videos for a couple. Uh, I don't know about eight months now. I'm gonna ask that guy. Has foreign investing created a crater enough, big enough crater in the Australian housing market that even if the the Australian people default on their mortgages that nothing will happen because there's enough foreign interest in the housing market well the foreign investors they're just always going to pump up the prices no That's i understand that but is there enough foreign invested money in australia so that even if the australian person that owns their home and they work every day and they don't have investment properties if they default on their homes it won't matter yeah. because there's so much other money already in there yeah yeah. Does that yeah, does this, that question yeah. make any sense? Yeah. Like Yeah, I understand. It's like you can't really compare it. It's like you're comparing the moon to the size of the sun. Like you can't compare like the mass. Right. It's just yeah, you can't compare because the laundered money it, and that's been going on for ages. Oh yeah. Like it's not like pre COVID, it's not GFC no, 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 because no, no. they've been doing it. Australia's like, been even it, since the nineties. Two thousand and eight is like, when it got really strong. Yeah, exactly. And then two thousand and thirteen yeah. is when they started laundering through casinos in Australia. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. And then that's it kept going, and and then I got yeah, a couple that's why of the death rent threats. Suddenly spiked. That's why it suddenly spiked in 2013. Yep. 2013 supposed to be a bearish market. Every city in Australia should be like linked to Perth, like realistically. Yes. Like if it's, everything's going along with average wages, 
and a you know a autopilot as you say autopilot economy mm. but because of all these interventions all these crap coming in all these yeah, first time dust. fires and then like and then some people they just get greedy like there's so much greed that's one of the factors as well people they they get a lot of equity and they're like oh probably it's going to keep going up and then i had someone say like back in i think 2017 uni he was like saying by 2100 like last year of this century the rents for like a garage is going to be like a thousand bucks in sydney i was like you got to be joking what? sydney price is going to go down it's not going to always go up and then now he's silent <laughs> Did and you see all that? the property bulls, all the property bulls, all the so-called Airbnb entrepreneurs, they're all silent, as silent as a cricket in yeah, the grass. That's true. Like, you Did you see that? Because it's crashing. Did you see it's that micro really house, that, that little shed house that sold in Toronto for $1.8 million? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I've seen the Toronto garage for like a million bucks. That's ridiculous. I've seen in this place called St. Peter's. It's a suburb, I think. I think there's a guy called Mike in the comment section. He was talking to me earlier, text, texting in the uh, comment section. He said he also lives in Sydney. I think he knows a suburb called St. Peter's. That place, there's like a, like those old 1920s style units. Yeah. Two bed, one bath, no garage. So you have to park your car in a parking space and like a super tiny yard. And then it's like those 1920s style, like it's not an independent house. So on your left side and your right side, you're connected with like other duplex. houses. Yeah, it's like a duplex, like on both ends. So it's not like a semi-detached where you have like an independent property split in two. You have like a street of properties separated into like slices. And that property sold for 1.7 million Australian. And this is like inside Kobe. I don't know who the hell bought that. I think it's just... This FOMO, it's still there, but it's waning. I and just I've don't think I don't, say, but 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 I don't think uh, I don't think interest rates are low enough that the Australian proper or the guy that works as a doctor, even a doctor in Australia, I don't think he could afford unless he put an eighty oh, percent yeah. payment. Oh yeah, they can't. Yeah, because I have a doctor like like um I know this doctor and then um he lives like in the western suburbs, like let's say twenty kilometers away from this from like the CBD, like yeah. Because, yeah, he, he can't afford it. And the doctors who are, like, currently living in Sydney okay are people who bought, like, in the 90s or, like, 1980s. But if you're, like, 2000, 2010, like, you, you don't have you don't have a chance, man. You, you don't have a chance in Sydney. Just if you're, like, in Sydney and you are you can get out, just get out ASAP, please. Just get the hell out of here ASAP. And if you're, like, in Melbourne, if, let's say, the COVID's gone or something, just get out of Melbourne ASAP. Because in other areas of, let's say, Victoria State or New South Wales or Queensland, there's so much more opportunities. It's like you living in merit, you're debt free. Mm -hmm. Like I moved, like I just moved houses, like I think um, seven months ago and used to be like 10 Ks away from the city. Now it's like 13 Ks. Even though I moved, let's say two Ks away, you just feel that stress like gone. You know, just even 5Ks, 10Ks away from the center, you just feel like that race, that treadmill um, feeling is just gone. That stress is gone. I got a video here I want to show you guys. It's Housing Crisis Australia Get Out of Sydney. It's from three – it yeah. says it's from three Get years out, ago, yeah. but it's older because I haven't lived in Vancouver in about over four and a half. So it says get out – because the YouTube took this, chat, this video down and then they put it back up. So – so here it is, uh, Housing Crisis Australia, Get Out of Sydney, and that's from, again, th uh, it says three years. It's older than that. I know because I haven't lived there in four and a half. Yeah. But but I, I've been warning people to get the heck out of those cities. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why I feel so lonely because after um, 2014, when I finished high school, all my friends, like, they all left. They're just sick and tired of this crap. And then I had, like, a colleague. He was in the same high school as me, but then he's, like, five, six years older than me. And then he, he's actually Filipino, so he's like a, well, he was born in Philippines, and he migrated here like 2000, 2001. And then they, their family, they, like he and his sister, his mom and dad, like they sold their home here, and then they moved back to the Philippines to create like a business or something. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they went back, I think, 2018, January, February. Mm -hmm. So I was working in that like retail setting back in like that time. He was like a supervisor of me and i miss that guy he's like really really good really nice and then he, he he just got the hell out i didn't really know like you know like you want to make friends at work but like people were like 
the turnover rate is so high because people they leave the city because they can't afford it they go to newcastle or like another tier two tier three city because they just can't make ends meet in sydney and i'm looking at the comment section there's this guy called mike and then he said there's a suburb called beecroft yeah beecroft well that's actually 25 30 25 kilometers away from the city but it's three million i think it's again because of the propping up but um i think sydney there's like there's no chance but when I was in high school, uh, Beecroft w still had like some chance. I I'm just looking at the comment section and um a few. Yeah, because it's like twenty five like, uh, kilometers, right? So. Uh, twenty kilometers, yeah, twenty to twenty five, yeah. And then there's uh, another suburb called Reesby, Panania, Padstow. Mm -hmm. Um, those are like twenty five ish kilometers away. That's like an hour, ten minute drive. And then beyond that is like Campbell Town, the Radlin. So the place I work now. My supervisor, so he's like the head supervisor of the shop. So he earns about like 80 to 90 grand Australian easy, right? Mm -hmm. But he gets taxed 20% to 30%. So he has like nothing left. He lives like fifth ring road. Like he lives in Narellan. That's like one hour, 30 minutes drive to like the place I work. And then, Does he have one of those robot cars that he pushes the button and drives it home? There is no robot cars. <laughs> there's no. There's a you few. You know what like, I mean? Um, those electric cars. No, no one has. No one has the money. He he just has like those nine two thousand nine uh, BMW. No, because <laughs> the people. No, the people who have like expensive cars are people who have like heaps of debt. <laughs> that's okay. a, that's okay. the funny bit. Who, who borrow a lot? He actually used to live, let's say, twenty kilometers away from the city. But Narellan, that suburb, is like 40, 45 kilometers away from the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's really far. And Sydney, the um, the transport system is actually crumbling. I've seen like your Sydney is a like s hole video. You're talking about the Sydney um trains crashing. Mm -hmm. I was at Redfern Station one day. Many of the viewers probably know. Um, I was talking to this transport worker. I said like, how how did this like crumbling infrastructure happen and then like i i just went up front I, I try not to be confrontational like a few um passengers got a bit scared <laughs> but i didn't mean to scare anyone and then the worker was like this is getting out of control as well he said like ever since 2016 the transport system in sydney the sydney trains has been crumbling and then when you google just put in google um sydney trains are uh, speed it's actually average 43 kilometers an hour mm -hmm. which is really really bad let's say in china or india or like russia or like united states or something they probably have like trains like 100 k's or something like that mm -hmm. australia is like 40 k's and the and the trains are so expensive if you go 10 k's train one trip it's like four dollars five dollars australian which is like three us wow. and um and um, if you live in the first ring road, so there's a road called M1, which is called Motor One Road. Just type it like Sydney M1. The tolls is um, so that road goes from like the airport towards um the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. One way, sixteen dollars Australian. Come back, another sixteen dollars Australian. So that's about like ten dollars US. One way. I'm talking about one way. And we have people working like from eastern suburb to the northern suburb and they come home work, they have to pay like 40 bucks in tolls a day. That's about $30 US a day. <laughs> so too bad we didn't get those flying cars. Yeah, th no, there is no flying cars. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm, I'm just being, I'm yeah. trying to lighten up the situation a little bit. Yeah, but yeah man. Yeah. Listen, we're winding up to my third hour. I'm going to have you back on the show again 1 million percent. Yeah. And um, um, maybe if you want to come on trends in the housing market too sometime, you're yeah. welcome to come and talk about the housing I'll try, situation. Because it's just mo it's just my Sunday. I don't have work. I have free time. But Okay, then I, you can come on Mike in the Night again. It's not a problem. Yeah, but the thing is I don't have much to say about in the Mike of the Night topics. It's mainly about housing. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, well, but well, I know well, in Mike in the Night, it, you guys are talking about Kobe and – or this, I'm a bit off topic. Okay, you know what? Do me a favor. Do uh, I want you to write down the ten reasons why I want to leave Sydney? Write them down, and I'll make an independent. Yeah. I'll make an independent video with you alone, and it won't be live, and yeah, then I'll sure. upload it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's better for me to make it independent. Yeah. 
Yeah, write down yeah. the ten top reasons why I want to leave Sydney, Australia, and then we'll we'll make a show for it. And then what I'll do is I'll just make it All with right. you, record it, okay. and then upload it, yep. and then do that. All right, Mike. I have one more thing. Yeah. Um, I know it's a bit long, but is it okay for the next interview? We'll talk about a little bit on the, like the apartments and like mascot towers because I got quite I, a I already few got somebody coming on for that I, next Wednesday. Yeah, because I, I I actually have I'm actually like a first hand witness of like what happened on that day because I used to work in like mascot and then in the evening when I finished work I saw like police cars and like fire trucks like surrounding I thought there was like a fire mm -hmm. and then the next day I came to work there was like a like a building issue and then we had like customers coming into our shop saying um like they had to leave because um the the infrastructure the buildings like cracked and then I went closer near the building so I actually went that near there before they like um, closed off the entire area and then I saw like this like massive crack and then back then the blowout was like three million dollars five million dollars I was predicting by 2020 it's gonna hit like 10 million 15 million like in repairs but now it's like more than 53 million in repairs guys uh, for, like, Tommy's talking guys Tommy's talking about the shoddy condo builds in Aust in Australia a couple of towers that were built that are people can't live in and uh, people had to uh, uh, relocate somewhere else because the, the the structure wasn't safe. And there's a lot of mortgages going sideways with that. Yeah. 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 There, people are actually declaring bankruptcy. Like, um, like I watched uh, a current affair and the 60 minutes about like um the reporters interviewing the residents. Some of the tourists, well, the people renting, they aren't really affected. They just have to vacate and throw out like, um, furniture. But the people who actually bought and who are actually owners living in there, they're like screwed. And many of them are still like mortgage. And we're not talking about 200K like mortgage. We're talking, oh, we're talking about, about 850,000, yeah, yeah, 1.4 million. We're talking about half a million dollars average. And, they, and on top of that, they have to put repair costs. That's the thing. And um, I just wish in the next video, I want to touch on the Ashfield apartments because there's this other suburb that has like um apartment cracking and i first found that video out on this channel called heiser says so i'll just spell it out h-e-i-s-e h-e-i-s-e and then says s -A -Y -S -E. oh i know that guy I, I, I think i'm subscribed to his channel yeah yeah i just hope one day i just like i just dream of this day i just wish like you guys could do like a full person like stream like on zoom so like you and then meet up with Martin North, and then Heiser says, and then Robert K C. Kiyosaki, and then you guys have like a one hour session, and then you guys talk about Bitcoin, and then talk about, let's say, other cryptos, oil, and then talk about Australian housing, mm -hmm. and then the corona. I just wish well, we like, you guys could arrange that. I can that. make a few phone that, calls. That would like be so cool. Yeah. Because I'm actually really interested in crypto, because um, I did a lot of research, I found like, the property markets worldwide, that's going to keep falling down. That's crumbling unless they keep propping it up with uh, money printer go burr. Bonds are pretty much dying. Bonds, they're pretty much dead to treasuries. Um, stocks is very volatile. And currencies, because of the trade wars, the currency pairs, I don't want to touch. But the only thing I think is promising is crypto. I don't want to be like shilling for crypto or anything but i use this thing called coin spot it's actually recommended by a neighbor and then i flipped this thing called synthetex or something this crypto from 50 bucks to 250 bucks so it's like before i didn't really believe in crypto but then during the lockdown and stuff i learned more and more about from you and from robert from mike uh from uh, Martin North, from Heiser Says, and then from like a few cryptos. Mm -hmm. And I think like the only safe bet is pretty much gold, silver, crypto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Robert Kiyosaki, who was saying this God's money, and then there's like the fake money, so, which is like the Antichrist, satanic money. And that's the Antichrist, satanic, Mark of the Beast, 666, whatever you call it. That money is just fiat. And that fiat is like the Australian dollar, the American dollar, Canadian dollar, euro, pound, yen, yuan, whatever it is. The real money is gold, silver, um, Bitcoin, and a few altcoins. I think that's going to boom in the future. I think. And have you heard of something called Yuan Finance? 
No. It's no. actually really interesting. So it's Y-E-A-R-N. And then just finance. Send me a link. I, send me a link on, yeah. on, on, on Skype and I'll look at it. It's no yeah. problem. And three months ago, that was worth 40 bucks. Now it's worth 40,000 bucks. What? It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm serious. I'll send you the link. It's it's like a crypto. So like you know how you have Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, all of that. Mm -hmm. Ethereum has like some limitations and disadvantages, but Yearn Finance sort of acts similarly to Ethereum, but it doesn't have like a lot of the limitations, and it's more like efficient than um Ethereum. So that caused a lot of interest, and then interest in the market and development, as well as people seeing it rise, people went FOMO as well. And then that spiked to like $40,000. So if you put a thousand bucks in it, let's say in July, it would have been like a million dollars now and you just retire. Yeah. Okay, it's Tommy, ridiculous. I got to let you go because I'm falling asleep here, buddy. It's three and uh, it's it's getting pretty late here. But uh, I will get you back on the show again, I promise. We'll arrange. I got you on, on, on Skype. I'll get you back on so we yeah. can work out, uh, we can make some yeah. videos together, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and that last crypto I want to like say is called Synthetex, which is S Y N T H E T I X. Okay. I put fifty bucks down for that, and then it flipped to like two fifty. Nice. And I, yeah. That's enough <laughs> money to I, get you to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I want to learn about cryptos more because I think, like year on year, like compared to like two thousand eight let's say bonds or like Germany 30 or like ASX or like TSX, all these stocks and everything. I think the highest yield is crypto. That's the only thing that has the highest yield. In also gold and silver, but they're suppressing gold. Yeah, they've been spoofing those markets for Obviously, years now. You know they're that. They're manipulating it. Yeah, they've been, it's been yeah. decades. They want to try and intervene in crypto as well. Okay. Yeah, I wish I got into crypto early. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's just, Listen, I'll yeah. get you back on the show. I promise. It's it's. I've been going for yeah. three hours Thanks, and five Mike. minutes, and I have to go to the bathroom. All right. I'll let you. I'll, I'll, I'll get you back care. on. Don't worry. I'll be here again. Don't worry. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you so much. Thanks.